Hello, welcome back to the Virgo channel. My name is Laura. I'm going to do a general message from Virgo. Know that energy is fluid. Worlds can be reversed. Always interpret the message as it best resonates with you. I want to thank all my new subscribers. I want to thank you for all the likes, shares as well, and your comments. I look forward to reading them every day. Um, I like to see that the channel is growing and it's you know, getting some good feedback because the readings are different, right? I mean, I like to dive deep into my readings. I like to look at the shadows, the spiritual blocks, the shadows, and see how they play out as karmic themes within your experience. That it makes the reading, I think they're very healing. They're more healing because a lot of times when we're dealing with the karmic, we feel like we have no power. We feel like we like are stuck a lot of times between a rock and a hard place because we, we really have strong feelings for a person and then they're not treating us right. They're disrespecting us. And again, there's a sense of not feeling as if we have any control. And you know what? I feel like that's going to be the topic today. You know, I feel like the tables have turned Virgo I feel like at one time you were the person that was like, I don't have any control no matter what I do. I try to accommodate this person. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what I do. I could treat them with the same energy they give me. Doesn't matter. I can treat them better. Doesn't matter. I can do whatever it is. It doesn't matter. And so, you know, when we get to this place of like, I've, listen, I've tried everything and the problem's not me, it's actually you. And then I feel like you've gotten to a place of like, I'm ready to disconnect. I'm ready to disconnect. And so now the tables have turned because now I feel like someone's tapped into you and they can feel you. And they're like, they feel like you're like, you know what, I've kind of flatlined. This connection is flatlined. Now, I don't know why I just felt that but I'm sure it's going to play out within our reading. Now, if you want to enter into winning a free reading with me, you got to be obviously open to it, getting a shadow reading. You got to like the video. You got to subscribe to the channel. And you got to write the word of your video in your comment bar. The word of the video is always the underlining energy that tells me why everyone's doing what they're doing. I just wanted to say also, for all my subscribers that join the Psychic Soul Healer coaching shadow coaching program i did start a facebook group where i will be offering um little mini readings like you can ask me like one question two questions sometimes i'll have it for free sometimes it'll be donation based but i wanted to offer you guys something a little bit more only because you know shadow healing coaching is exactly that shadow healing coaching so we always like to talk a little bit about what goes on, right? Like within your week, because triggers, what emotional triggers. And it's all about learning to integrate this spiritual lesson and your emotions are the gateway to spiritual healing. So there's a whole process to shadow healing. And my program is inner child healing, shadow healing, reparenting. And all the healing modalities to heal the effects of trauma. Because when you're connected to a narcissist or a person that is continually gaslighting and manipulating, it messes with, with us. It messes with us psychologically and it messes with us physically. Where anxiety happens because, again, your amygdala swells living with a person that you can't trust. Again, emotional trauma is just as devastating as physical trauma. So I wanted to be able to offer something where people could, again, they could pick a card. We could do readings for you guys because I know you guys love to do the little coaching and, and where you get like the little advice and stuff. And I still want to do that and mainly do it where it's like, you know, the energy exchange is, is just that. It's a it's a minimal energy exchange. It's like you, you can give a dollar for me to answer a question because it's about spiritual law, right? Spiritual law is everything needs to be equal. 
just like when I do the readings, they're always going to be live because I believe in what's best for everyone involved. You get the free reading. I get to draw attention to the channel and whoever comes across the channel that resonates with the reading. Well, they're going to, you know, they're going to benefit from that too. So it's again, everything is in spiritual alignment. Now let's get cracking into seeing what the word of the day is going to be. You know that that's probably people like to just get on with the readings, but all those things are important, you know. And if you are interested in joining the Shadow Healing Coaching Program or finding out anything where I'm going to be or social media stuff or about my other YouTube channels, if you're connected to any other zodiac, check out my Psychic Soul Healer channel, check out my Scorpio channel. All right. Or if you forget the word of the day, the word of the day will always also be in the comment bar. The word of the video is the word of the day. And that is shame. All right. So that is the word of the video. I feel like someone is, again, that you're connected to someone that is really embarrassed about the way that they treated you. They're really ashamed of the way that they treat you. I feel like this person, for whatever reason, you met them in like a high time within their life. They would like, they were on top of the world. They were making a lot of money. They were seen as someone important or they felt they were seen as someone important. Their life was going good. However, this person has a lot of... Um, shady behaviors i feel like they kind of live a double life like the life that they present to like you know I, i'm visualizing and it, like i know that this person isn't a preacher but the thing think of like a preacher that's up on the stage that's preaching and everybody loves them but then they're like cheating they have a thousand wives they're an alcoholic they're like swindling money like so like again like this person like is, is like that has like a double kind of like a double life you met them and when you met them they were again in um in the highlight of their life and what you saw was like the good part of them <laughs> you didn't see any of that other stuff that was buried and the stuff that was buried is that this person you know is very selfish they're not just very selfish they're um i don't even want to say that they don't like themselves i feel like they have an inflated ego but the thing is when a person has such an inflated ego they really don't feel good about themselves that's the irony it's just dealing with this person they're always self-righteous like you couldn't say anything to this person um without them deflecting it ignoring it just doing like like things and always kind of wanting to put you in your place and so it's again now they're looking at you as if you're like again they don't know who you are and they don't know who you are. You look better. You feel stronger. Your, your energy actually changed on them. Again, where ESP connection through the heart and mind. At one time, it was very soft. But you're someone that's very soft, but very strong also. And I feel like your person confused the strength for the fact that they didn't have to do anything. You didn't need them. So there is a sense of that they are looking back because you're in separation. And they also know that I feel like you see it as betrayal, betrayal. But really it's insecurity because this person has a hard time being connected to anybody. So what they do is they act indifferent, right? They act indifferent. Always trying to create doubt within you. So, and then if you blame them, right? If you blame them, what gets in the way is pride. Always triggering abandonment, making you feel powerless. And actually what winds up happening is normally 
the person that is with them winds up loathing themselves and disgusted. But I feel like what happened is you became disgusted with them because of the negativity, the unnecessary negativity of constantly wanting to miss, like to create like, this is intimacy problems. Like they deliberately create intimacy. Intimacy is all about trust. When that goes, that's when things in the bedroom go because there's too much anger. And this is like, again, this person's like an energy vampire. It's like, I don't like them because I feel like they're in separation and it's like they can feel your energy and they like the fact that you're mad. They like the fact that you're mad because again, there's a sense of, I want to be in control. So it's like, and you're not giving me anything and it feels better for them to actually be angry than it does for them to be sad and to be stuck in shame. But this is their energy, shame. So they're at a very low vibration because people that have shame, it means that they're constantly sabotaging their lives. They're constantly doing something that's creating embarrassment for themselves. And it's because they're coming from their ego. So there's a point, point where your person, they can't help it. It's they, they like you. They don't feel good about themselves. You know, they feel good about themselves when they come from their ego, but to actually be vulnerable, they don't feel good about themselves. So their way is they want you to always feel like hopeless, right? And then, and the way that they do this is it's like they don't move. They're not flexible. So what we see here is like a real second chakra imbalance. And that second chakra imbalance is all about control. It's all about dominance it's all about like again the, when the person's not flexible it's because they're very fearful and that's what i feel like this person is but the problem is is that their ego when a person goes through so many times of sabotaging themselves with no healing it's like almost like they keep getting coatings on them i know that that sounds crazy crazy but it's the coding is a distort distorts their perception about themselves and the world around them. And then their behaviorisms are in alignment with that. So this person doesn't even have an identity. Their identity is always a mask because they don't like who they are because they don't do the work. Now that doesn't mean that they can't have feelings. They had feelings. Not like they didn't have feelings they wouldn't have been with you but not being able to give you any power and how does a person not give somebody power well they again they neglect they neglect and if you're a low vibration you're gonna you're going to self-neglect you're not going to give yourself anything because you're going to be in a place of depression which is actually what this person wanted to do but the problem now is, is that they have feelings because you're not who they perceived you are. Just the same as you're like, you're looking at them and being like, you're not who you said you are. And they're looking at you like, well, you're not who you said you are either. But they're like mortified because they're like, if they knew who you were, then they would have treated you differently. But it's, you know, God always hides your gifts and your talents from people that potentially could hurt you know that it's the way that the good lord protects us know that because now this person's in a place of guilt you know they were hoping to uh get an attachment but i feel like they have very addictive behavior right so there it's all about like control for this person right the need to control that's what I see. So again, it's not like they're not in regret. They are in regret, but they're more in regret because like they have this newfound knowledge and this newfound knowledge, wisdom, I should have taken the sticker off, but nevertheless, uh, they see it. They see 
and they see it from a higher level because it's what is making them like, it's not so much you. Yes. They're looking at you and saying, oh my God, I didn't, I didn't perceive you as who you truly, truly were. I misjudged who you are. And I know you definitely misjudged who I was and I was going to take advantage of that. But, you know, and I know now that you know that I was going to do that, but it's not like I didn't like you. I did. It's just the need to have control because again, this person doesn't trust themselves. And that's why it's, this is a spiritual connection because it made them look at themselves. God used you as a tool to make this person look at themselves. It was like God saying, look at yourself. Look at you. Look at you. Look at you, what this shame is creating. It's like, because what's happening is they feel guilty. They feel so lonely. You know, they feel so lonely. And that's what it always comes back to. Shame always brings us back to a place of where we want to isolate. We want to hide. Because we're in a place of regret. And it's again, because this person was coming from their ego. So, but I don't believe that they're in the same place that they were. Their life tends to look like a roller coaster, I feel like. And that's what happens when we have a second shock. We're in balance. We have no balance. We can't go with the flow of life. We need to control it because we don't trust ourselves. That we got to be connected. We got to be connected to the world. We got to be connected to the world through something that we love to do. Through again, connecting to our heart to give and receive of love is your free will, right? What you choose to do, you know, and as long as you're putting a mustard seeds worth of effort in every day, every day, every day, it's going to grow. The universe is going to conspire to bring you everything you need to support you because the universe is what God is. It's just the vibration of unconditional love, which is the energy that's inside of you. When again, you don't like who you are and you have shadows. Well, the spirit is telling you, the universe is telling you by what's happening within your life. And so that's why spirit is saying, look at you. Okay, you don't want to look at you. You have a big ego. Okay, we're going to do this. I'm going to bring you this person that you do have a connection to. You like this person, but you're going to try and control it. You're going to try and manipulate it. You're going to try and push this person down to make yourself feel bigger and better because you don't really know what you want because you're afraid. Okay. You're going to look at them through this view. And then when your life goes down like a roller coaster, you're going to look, see, see everything. You're going to see everything. You're going to be in regret. You're going to pay. You're going to be in regret because that's the only way you know how to learn. There was someone interfering in our relationship. See, so again, this person always had other people around and, and that could be anything or anyone because this person is not strong within themselves. So the people that are really close to this person have way too much power over them because the person still needs to get love from somewhere. So they're going to give love to what feels comfortable to them and what's comfortable is what's familiar. Unfortunately, we teach people the way we want to be treated. So this person, being that they have very low character and they're really just for themselves, teaches people that they need to, again, look out for themselves. So the people that they trust don't trust them. And so, you know, they have a lot of control because I don't trust you. That's why your person unconsciously doesn't realize that they're in an environment where they're being controlled. And that, so that's why they also feel the need to control. And that's what happens if we didn't like create enough of ourselves. And a person that has a second chakra imbalance, they definitely have the first chakra imbalance, which is there is no connection to the physical body. This person's always up in their head strategizing. They're always like trying to be 10 steps ahead. They're always trying to create that persona. They're always trying to, and that not, you know, they may be smart, but they're, they're not emotionally intelligent. They don't have friends. They don't really, everything is 
for show. That's why this person's lonely because they don't connect deep. There's intimacy problems because when there's shame, there's intimacy because on some level, the shame came from betrayal and it came from betrayal, not just, it came from betrayal in childhood. That's a, that's a behaviorism that when, when we create shameful experiences, it's because we're taught on some level that we're bad. And we do something that we're bad. So this person has formed all this coding on them because of that. I was looking for the shame card, but I know you guys remember that I, that's why the disassociation, because it doesn't feel good. And that's why the addictive behavior, because it doesn't feel good. So when we're walking around with the energy imbalance from a root chakra imbalance, what happens is we need that serotonin high. We need to go get it. We're going to shop. We're going to eat. We're going to do whatever it is. We're going to have uh, people, you know, relationships. We're going to, we're going to be out there. And I think that your person, when they first met you, they were like a little bit of a predator. They were like, oh, look at the innocence of you. Look how nice. I know like we have a connection. You're sweet, this and that. But they weren't thinking about really anything good within the relationship. I'm not going to lie. It was like they were thinking like that you would be like a nice side piece or something. But now you're always on their mind because, you know, the tables have turned. The tables have turned. They're like, no, and I'm all over the moon, over you. It's like, I can't stop thinking about you. It's like, I can't stop. It's like, because again, that's obsessive behavior now. Remember, this person hasn't taken the time to really get to know you. Mm -hmm. So, because they were too busy strategizing and trying to control the connection. So it's again, can we start over? And you knew that that was coming. Don't tell me that you didn't. You could be like, but they did all this. And it's like, yeah, because that's what happens when people have spiritual blocks that aren't healed. They can have a connection to you and say, I really do like, love you. I really do care. But only God's love is perfect for you. You know, like this person is has shadows. You know, they they have shadows. And the way that you might say, well, God's love. Well, to be honest with you, when you are creating yourself, it's a co-creation process between you and the universe. And that's, again, through feeding yourself and creating yourself. So we have to ask ourselves, again, we can't deny that the person has feelings, even though that that's what it looks like but we can't do anything with this energy. If the person's again broken, it doesn't matter. It's like, again, it's not that surprising because they, there is that soul connection there. There is that, but the problem is, it's almost like now you're my property. You're not, because I have intimacy problems. So I'm gonna associate love with ownership and expectation. And God says, that's not my love. God says, my love is unconditional. Be careful, be careful. And so then you say, okay, we can't do anything with this energy. So why the hell did you bring this energy into my life? Universe, because I didn't need all this. Like to, like to have like a fake, a fake twin flame, you know, like a fake one, like one that almost tricks you into like, you know, into like some trauma bond relationship. Uh -uh. Why did that happen? Resilience. Oh, so you need to like resilience and spirits. Like this person tried to wear you down. That's an actual spiritual gift. Someone else tried to wear you down in childhood is what spirit was saying. I was going to get smart. I was going to say, oh yeah, for us to be resilient to like have to put up with abuse and spirit like just bitch slapped me and said no that was a gift that when you grew up in trauma you had to become resilient where you couldn't let a person mess with your head like that 
they're strong. And that's what this person needs, someone weaker to control. Not all the time is our, you know, our shadows burying wounds. Sometimes they gifts, you know. Um, dance. I always think dance is to be able to go with the flow, you know. And I feel like that's how I I always read that card. Dance, right? Because there's a rhythm when you find dance, and there's, you know, the way that our body moves. And I just feel like like being resilient for you is like when it doesn't feel right you're like I'm out like I can't go with the flow with this it's keeping me in a place of limitation it's keeping me stuck it doesn't feel good the reason why you're resilient is because you don't stay long in places like this like this is a relationship that we can see like the person's like i want to start over and if you had wounds if you put up with this and you go back to this person they would just wear you down wear you down wear you down and have no problem wasting your time and sometimes money too where you wouldn't be able to go with the flow see when you're co-creating with the universe doing what you love you'll find your soul's path you know because you begin to live your bliss this is how we are able to be like child and it says that in the bible be like childlike it means go out and find yourself go out and have fun try different things so i am feeling like you had to be resilient growing up and you also had to go with the flow of whatever the environment was. But I felt like if someone pushed your energy down and suppressed that, it's like that's hard to obviously go with the flow. But you had to teach yourself to do that once you moved out of that environment that you grew up in with that person that tried to keep you down. You know, or when you got away from the school that, that a teacher tried to do it or somebody tried to do it to you. It's like it didn't feel good. But in, now in order to co-create, we do it. It's like it's like a dance. You are like intuitively being led. And it's like through the things that you love. And that's how you become resilient because you're continually giving yourself the energy. The, which is the love to be able to like decipher what energy is good and what energy is bad. And I feel like this person's energy like was bad, but it's not because they don't have feelings. And the, I knew you were going to pull this space. Space means again, that if you grew up in an environment with someone that suppressed you, it means that you didn't, grow up and create your own life. You know, you had someone control you, grow up and control you, or it felt that way. So it's very suppressed and very traumatizing too, because it's like, well, if I do the wrong thing, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get yelled at. I'm going to get, you know, I want to please my parents. I want to do the right thing. So there's a part of you that hasn't created yourself. This space here means like you can create anything. Think of it as a, clean canvas why are you going to create the same type of environment that was traumatic to you growing up you know again someone suppressed you where spirit's saying no 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 it's like it's about you still going out and going with the flow and dance again it's a hula dance and you'll have to take my word for it and um you know and to utilize like the time and the space to create your life that it's like right now it's an empty canvas like to to do that that because this was a fake a fake twin flame you know there's a very strong connection they knew what it was but they weren't evolved enough 
that's what makes a fake twin flame. It's a person that they it could have and they would have evolved. They didn't, they weren't capable. Instead, they wanted to manipulate. They wanted things their way because they didn't believe that they could have a real relationship. And so what did they manifest? Not having a real relationship because that was the core belief. So all that other bullshit was the result of their core belief of not believing that they could have love because they're full of shame. Because someone suppressed their energy and took their energy away. And that's why you also were brought up in that environment, like goes to like. But spirit says, hey, but you haven't done anything with that energy yet. So let's make you go through this test to see if you pass it. If you integrate it by passing it, meaning you tell this person no, and now it's to go out and create your own life with the things that you love so you can attract more things that are in a vibrational resonance with you so you can create your own heaven on earth. But it starts with creating yourself. And that's what spirit's saying. It's like too much trauma from the past, not like, and not enough new experiences. So to be with this person, it would be like, oh, you're living kind of safe. What's familiar, but what was familiar, like wouldn't make you happy. And so we ask in God's hands, oh, how appropriate. My trust in life is implicit God's greater knowing and greater love guides my heart and my choices. My faith is, is steady and I remain true to my life. Everything unfolds according to God's will. So what Spirit's saying is, um, again, this wasn't about, um, this is again what came to you and there was a connection and you would have chosen this person. This person, it was a divine connection, but not one that God says, okay, this is this was for you. And the reason why is because you haven't created enough experiences of your own to really know what you would like. It's almost like going into a bakery and only seeing two desserts. When meanwhile, if you went down the block, you'd see 200 different desserts. You'd be like, you kind of feel like you reject because you're still evolving. You're still growing. And so, like Spirit's saying, you need to do a little bit more of that because that will recondition your mind how you perceive yourself. Uh, and that's how you heal. That's how you attract better energy. And that can happen now because you just pass that test saying, no, universe, I know I'm worth more than that. I know I'm worth more than that. And Spirit says, bravo, now go and create yourself, become love. I'm going to leave that there. Virgo, you let me know how you resonated with this. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.